So, um, communications is all about this picture. So we pick a message, we apply the message to a transmitter, the transmitter uh, modulates the message across some medium, uh, it's distorted by noise, and the receiver attempts to figure out what was sent. So that's, that's, our that's digital communication. This is digital communication. That's correct. So uh, I'm uh, like I say, I'm um, um, I have my biases, so I'm biased towards digital communication. So uh, that uh, I won't talk very much about analog communication, but certainly uh, uh, analog communication or estimation or, or things like uh, control or anything of that nature. But that's that's another direction that one could go. But as far as this picture is concerned. Um, this is what we're concerned, this is what I'm concerned with, at least right now. Uh, in particular, we're worried about the medium, which is new, and we're worried about the noise, which is also new. So uh, this, isn't, uh, this isn't a Gaussian channel, it's a channel in which um, very different things are happening. So as an example, uh, we could have a transmitter located at a point here at the origin, and a receiver uh, that occupies this entire plane. So I say one dimensional, I mean this is depicted in two dimensions, but the only, uh, the only thing that really matters is distance away from this plane, so in that sense it's one dimensional. So for instance, a molecule could be dropped at the transmitter and it could take some random path towards the receiver. So Brownian motion, um, you have to probably think back to, I don't know, the last chemistry course you may have taken was, but basically Brownian motion occurred because the molecule is being buffeted by all of the uh, uh, all of the other molecules in the medium, which are all moving randomly. So basically, if you have a message, uh, many ways uh, to describe this, we'll talk about some, but let's say you have a message and you inscribe it on some kind of molecule, such as DNA, drop it in here, that message has to get to the receiver somehow, one way is by Brownian motion, so it'll just jiggle along until finally it arrives. Um, this is, this is not especially interesting for the applications that I'm talking about. Um, instead, the motion can be constrained in various ways, such as you could do it in tubes. So here, we wrote a, uh, a fancy pants simulator in, um, in MATLAB to illustrate Brownian motion. So this is, this is basically an illustration of a Brownian motion of a particle in a tube that measures uh, three, nano, uh, three micrometers long by half a, half a micrometer wide. This is actually uh, uh, this is illustrating how the how the, uh, the Brownian motion would look in real time um, based on a, uh, a, a molecule of uh, a molecule and a medium of realistic parameters. Question over here. By Brownian motion, right? Are you referring to the physical process or referring to the Wiener process? Yeah. So uh, that's an excellent question. The um, we assume that, uh, uh, I'm referring to the physical process, but I'm modeling it as a Wiener process. That, uh, that assumption isn't always valid. It's valid for, for, uh, for Brownian motions that are nearly frictionless. Um, however, the techniques that I, that I talk about, um, um, the Wiener process is, is, uh, is convenient for a lot of reasons. For one thing, uh, it's easy to simulate. Um, for another thing, if the motion is unconstrained, the first arrival time distributions are available in closed form. Really, all we're concerned about here are the number of states you need to describe the motion and the first arrival time distribution. Um, so uh, once those are once those are available, you, you you don't really need to worry about the particular physical model of the Brownian motion. Anymore. But everything we're going to talk about is basically based on the linear process. So over here, um, if we see that again, we have a message molecule that's dropped in on this end, and the idea it has to, is that it has to propagate over to a receiver located over here. So we can see that uh, Brownian motion isn't particularly organized, as we would expect. It's completely random motion. Um, the amount of time that it would take to get from over here to over here, even though this is an extremely short distance, um, you can imagine that there are many, many, many possible paths that, that, the, that, the, that the particle could take and each of them would have a very different propagation time. Here's another thing that I've looked at. Um, this is joint work with, uh, with Sachin. We've looked at, uh, we didn't particularly simulate it this way, but, uh, but I, I, wrote, I wrote up a quick simulator for it. 
Uh, here's it in Brownian motion with drift. So previously, uh, the previous example was that the, uh, the particle started over here, completely random motion, so you saw that it, it went sort of forward and backward, it didn't really have any particular organization to the motion. Here, if, if, if you allow flow, if you allow drift, um, I mean, it does move sort of forward and backward, but there's a, there's a distinct bias to the motion, and in fact, it arrives much more quickly. Now, in particular, uh, we notice from those examples that, let's say, um, so you can think of two transmission schemes here. One is uh, inscribed matter. So you drop uh, a message-bearing molecule into this medium, and it randomly propagates to the receiver. Uh, this is something like sending an IP packet, except that the uh, the transmission time is 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 is, is completely random, it, or is not completely random, but it's it's uh, it's uh, it has a relatively high variance. Uh, another thing you can imagine is that let's say you just had one kind of molecule, uh, so you just had uh, you just had uh, let's say sodium ions or something like that. Um, at each time, you can either drop a sodium ion in or not. So you can send a one or a zero. And those sodium ions will take some random path and will arrive at the receiver some random time later. So based on the pattern of arrivals, you have to deduce whether or not a one was sent or not. And uh, one thing that we're going to see in a minute is that it really matters that the, uh, the pattern of, of elements that are dropped in over here and the pattern of arrivals over here can occur out of order. So that's actually a huge problem. But most importantly, the noise we see, at least at, at least at this level of modeling, is entirely in the uncertain time of propagation. So, um, just as a matter of philosophy, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with a language that information theorists can use to approach this. In other words, um, I don't think um, I'm not a big expert in chemistry. The last chemistry course I took was 15 years ago. Um, what I want to do is I want to I want to abstract away the details and focus on, uh, on simplified systems that information theorists can use. So one, one simplification I'm using is that, for one thing, we, we see from these examples that propagation time is random and is a source of uncertainty. So therefore, let's focus on that. Let's, let's abstract away all the other sources of uncertainty and focus on propagation time as a source of noise. 